Thank you for clicking on my video. You are awesome. Being the yesterday man, I cannot ignore the fact that I drive a vehicle that's almost 40 years old. So, without further ado, the long-awaited video on the Suzuki LJ81. Every story has a beginning, and this one starts in April 26th, 1990. This is before the internet folks, before Windows 95, the computer I still had at that stage was a Commodore VIC-20, believe it or not. But we'll get into that a bit later. So, the truck, if you can call it that. Nowadays, uh, my workmates call it the dinky toy. Back then, I was young, dumb, and full of... <laughs> My parents were just building a house at that stage. We needed a vehicle, a ute, so that we could get some building materials. Bags of cement if we needed it, the occasional bits of woods. That was before we fired the builder and ended up doing the whole thing ourselves. Suddenly the truck was made to work harder than what it was designed for. Anyway, start at the beginning, eh? I'd seen these driving around for quite a while and I, I quite liked what they looked like. Uh, they reminded me of the old Willys Jeeps, the way they were designed, and I think that's how they were designed, the sort of, that sort of look. So when I finally got rid of my first ever car I owned, which was uh, Morris Marina. Back then, there was no Top Gear to drop pianos on Morris Marinas, so either I had to do that myself or sell it. So I ended up selling it. I had no love for the Morris Marina. That was a, yeah, piece of... I'll keep it decent on this video. So, there was a car yard who was doing a private sale on this vehicle. We saw it there and fell in love with it immediately and bought it and I've never looked back. It is not the most comfortable vehicle to drive, especially when you're six foot four. Long distances, even though I've traveled long distances with it. Uh, my brother and I traveled all over the North Island here in New Zealand on holidays. I, I built a canopy out of plywood on the back so we can chuck all our gear in there and then we would pitch a tent and yeah just around the central plateau volcanic regions just having a look around there but with all the work it did for the house uh, I got a picture somewhere of it. all the roof trusses were which I carried back to the property for the house and yeah so things like that so after a while the engine sort of said well I've had enough of this you blew it up and we had to rebuild the engine a number of times. And what it used to do is split the pistons, like literally split the pistons. And here are a couple of examples here, the two pistons I still have, where yeah, one is completely burnt out and the other one's just got to split right down the center of it. So it was pretty obvious that the engine was doing things it was not really designed for. At the time I had a mate who had a later model Suzuki and he was taking the engine out of that one and putting a bigger engine in, so I took the engine out of that later model Suzuki and put it into this truck which is the same engine it's just got bigger bores so everything bolted straight in no issues so slightly more powerful went from an 800 cc to a thousand cc Yeah, she ran beautifully for decades after that. Of course, with all things, wear and tear does catch up. And recently, uh, my parents sold the farm. Uh, my dad retired and moved up here to the Hawke's Bay where I live. And so I got the truck back. The truck had been like a farm hack for a great number of years. Before that, I used to drive it to work. I used to work in Petone, which is towards Wellington. Here in New Zealand, of course. In between us, because we lived in Hawaii Rapper, is the Rimatakas, which is a very, very windy hill which rises to 555 meters above sea level. In the winter time, it used to be snowed in and you couldn't cross it. But yeah, I used to take that truck over that hill every day. Yeah, I definitely gave it a good run for its money. Here are a couple of aerial shots of my parents' farm. That's me flying the plane naturally. So multitasking, flying the plane and taking photos at the same time. So here are some archive photos of the first couple of rebuilds we did on it. That's still the old engine in there and oh my god was I really that goofy looking. Oh well, hopefully I've gotten better by age. So that's my father and I working on the truck, rebuilding it, taking it to pieces and, and rebuilding the old engine and getting it up and running again. And we got a number of years out of it after that before she blew up big time and we had to do it all over again. After that, it was the new engine in there, or the other engine in there. So now I've found myself, uh, once my parents sold the farm, like I said, uh, I got the vehicle up here in 
the Hawks Bay. So I parked it in my garage for probably five years before I decided, you know, I really should do something with that. So I took the engine out, took it completely apart. I mean, that engine was only a couple of years younger than the truck anyway, so it was the very next model it came out of. So all the seals were set like concrete. Any rubber wasn't pliable anymore, it was rock hard. So I took it to pieces, changed all the seals, piston rings, and then put the whole thing back together, and she ran sweet for a couple of months. <laughs> for a couple of months. Uh, I was over the moon that I managed to get her up and running, and she was running good, not an issue, not a puff of smoke, whatever. It, it was just running sweet, and then the clutch went well I thought the clutch went what actually happened is the engine wasn't bolted onto the gearbox properly or the the central drive pin hadn't seated properly I drove for a while with that and then it just pushed the clutch straight off the the pin so that was a loud bang and that was all she wrote on that one so I redid that actually put a new clutch in at the clutch plate uh, machine so that was all nice and pristine put that back in and after that I noticed that she started to smoke when I first started up. Once she heated up she was fine but straight off running she started to smoke again which is what she was doing before so <laughs> the poor thing's parked in my garage again and when I get a bit of time I have to take her apart again. So owning a vehicle that's almost 40 years old it, it is a never ending project. It will keep you busy for quite some time. Now I'm not the richest person in the world. I'm the money earner in this house. I have married. I have a dog, two cats, and some birds, so a limited amount of fun, so to speak. I don't get any other income. My YouTube channel isn't big enough for that sort of thing. So, and now BitChute, of course. So I'm uploading this on BitChute mainly because I love BitChute. So, yes, yeah, so there we are. Now, just a quick word on the paint job. The paint job on the truck was inspired by Jurassic Park 2. <laughs> brother and I went to Universal Studios shortly after that movie came out, took my brother to America, took him to Disneyland, took him to Universal Studios and that's where we saw the cars on display. Now I painted a truck that way because I couldn't get any company to match the paint. Whatever they did for me it was never quite that and I preferred to go to straight out camouflage than to have paint that was slightly off so that's why I ended up with the paint job that it is and I did that all myself with some masks tape and spray cans and that's how we got the camo job so from the first of next month the first of July I have two weeks off so I will be looking at the truck and seeing what the issues are I'm also doing a road trip filming footage for my documentary on shaky ground so more videos coming hopefully a bit more professional than this one might get away from the goofiness but we'll see how we go eh? so thank you for watching stay tuned more to come.